All right, welcome to your assignment today, guys. Uh, this one's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty doable. I'm excited for it. I think that we're going to do a great job on it. And let's just go ahead and get started. So first off, you need to make a copy. So as you remember from the last times we've done this, you're going to press File, Make a Copy, and you're going to change this name. First off, you won't have Answer Key here because that's just for mine. You're going to say instead of Copy of, you're going to say whatever your period you're in. So if you're in sixth period, you're going to put six point, or if you're in first period, you're going to put one point, and then you're going to put your name. So one point or one dash, as long as there's a one at the beginning there. So you could do one space dash space. And then whose name could I use here? Uh, we'll just use Ms. Parker's name because that's fun. Right? So that works perfect. So there's exactly what I want you to do. Period dash first and last name dash what the title is already. Then you're going to press OK and share it with the same people. Okay, if this isn't an option, don't worry, but if it's there, please click on it. Awesome. So once you've done that, I've already done that, and this is what my copy is. Now I'm going to put my name here in case I forgot up there. So my name is Ben Van Fleet. I know teachers have first names. Wild. And my period is fourth. Perfect. Fourth period doesn't exist, so oops. But that's okay. For me, it counts. Proportional relationships. So two quantities are proportional if they maintain equivalent what? So this is going to be a definition for you guys. And it's going to go in that new index that we created on Wednesday. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's an activity on Wednesday. And we can talk about that at the end of class today or once this video is over and we're all back in the main Zoom call. But right now, proportional relationships. Two quantities are proportional if they maintain an equivalent Oops, sorry. Ratio. Ratio. I remember, color gets in because it makes it easier for me. I know it's not just like it's fun, but it also makes it easier for me to grade. So when two quantities maintain an equivalent relationship, they are proportional. In equivalent relationship, which means that they will always reduce to the same rate and have the same ratio. So the ratio will always reduce to the same rate. So when we say reduce, this word means it simplifies to the same rate. So how we've been calculating the unit rate of all of our things uh, up to this point, if the items in like a set of data here, so like this is a in a table, that's a set of data. So if all of these have the same unit rate, then we have a proportional relationship. I'm gonna say that one more time just because it's a little confusing. If all of these items here, if 12 to 1, 24 to 2, and all of these items here have the same unit rate, if all of these have the same unit rate, then it is proportional. If they have the same, I'm, yeah, same unit rate or same ratio. So we want to check if this is what? Well, proportional. Proportional. That's a fun word to spell. We want to check if this is proportional. I like purple today. By calculating the unit rate for each of the following rates. Now, here, I forgot to get read this example, guys. That's awkward. Let me read this for you guys first, real quick. Jalen is baking a batch of chocolate chip cookies and uses one cup of chocolate chips per 12 chocolate chip cookies. Jalen can make 12 more chocolate chip cookies if he adds one more cup of chocolate chips, giving him 24 cookies and two cups of chocolate chips. Let's make a table to show that. So here, this is saying, oh yeah, I can use one cup of chocolate chips for 12 chocolate chip cookies. So if I bold that, that is the exact same as this, right? This one chop, cup of chocolate chips is the same as 12 chocolate chip cookies. Oops, this one should have been bolded too, but that's okay. Let me undo that so we're back to normal here. Now, if I doubled the recipe, I would have double one. Instead of one cup of chocolate chips, I'd have twice that, which is two. And instead of making 12 cookies, I would have 24. So that's great. And I do this two more times here. Now we want to check if this is proportional. I jumped the gun here, but 
That's okay. You'll forgive me, I'm sure. We want to check if this is proportional by calculating the unit rate for each of the following rates. Okay, let's go for this. So for row one, we see there are 12 cookies and one cup of chocolate chips. For row one, we see there are 12 cookies and one cup of chocolate chips. 12 cookies right here and one cup of chocolate chips right here. And we're gonna represent that in a fraction, just like we have unit rates and ratios in the past. So here we put 12, cup, 12 cookies per one cup of chips. And I put this because it's just so much shorter. One cup of chocolate chips is like a whole line. So because this has a denominator of blank, this also works as our unit rate. I'm gonna give you guys a second to think about this before I tell you. So what is this? Because this has a denominator of what, this also works as our unit rate. One. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me, goodness gracious. Because this has a denominator of one, this also works as our unit rate. For row two, we have a new way to calculate the new unit rate. Okay, so some of you guys, I think I really briefly discussed this in class. Um, I don't remember which periods. I think period one and maybe period six or seven, but here's the deal. The old way to calculate this was... Well, we got pretty good at this. We have to take our new ratio. So I made that for you guys, 24 over two for 24 cookies to two chocolate chips, like this table says. We would divide the top and the bottom by the denominator, and then we'd get our new ratio. So you're gonna double click like last time. Remember, if you don't remember, bleh, 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 remember to double click this because that's how you edit it. So double click and you edit. So 24 cookies and two cups of chocolate chips, well, we're going to divide the top and bottom by two because we need to get this bottom cups of chips or cups of chocolate chips to just one. We want one cup of chips, chocolate chips. Now, if we divide the top by two, 24 divided by two is 12. So we get 12 cookies per one cup of chocolate chips. Let's save and close this. Hey, is that the same unit rate as the one up here? Are these the same unit rates? Yes, totally. So that works. That totally worked. We could divide the top and the bottom by two. Now I'm going to give you the shortcut here, ladies and gentlemen. It's time. It's time to use the shortcut. You've learned and toiled over the hard way. We have to do the easy way now. We just divide the top by the bottom. If we know this, this has to be the case that the unit rate the one that we need to find uh, one of is on the bottom, then all we need to do is divide the top by the bottom. So what's 24 divided by two? 12. So we're gonna, I'm gonna fill these out correctly though. Fractions use division, that is correct. We're gonna control B, turn that thing purple. Um, I had a student ask me earlier if they can fill these out and color them after the fact. Great, go for it, as long as they're colored and bolded and such, that helps. Also remember pressing Control and B is a quick way to bold it. So if you're like, how is he doing that so fast? That's why. So since fractions use division, right? That's why I can divide. Fractions are just division. We divide 24 cookies by two cups of chips or chocolate chips. And we get, oh, 24 divided by 2 is 12 cookies per cup of chocolate chips. Perfect. Okay, and I'm just going to bold this whole thing. You guys are allowed to do that too. Also, if you don't like having these underlines here, you can totally get rid of them. I don't know why I keep them to be honest, but that's okay. Now is 12 cups of, or 12 cookies per cup of chocolate chips the same as this up here, our original unit rate? Oh, totally. So we're gonna give this a big fat, yes. You don't have to put that exclamation point, but I like to. A little bit of extra pizzazz. Sometimes I feel like Bob Ross when I'm talking about my formatting for documents. If you don't know who he is, look it up. 
nicest guy of all time, Bob Ross. Anyway, for row three and row four, don't look that up right now in class. If you pause the video to look that up or went to a different page, no, no, no. Do it at lunch. Getting distracted here. For row three and row four, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to use the new way. So if we divide, what do we have here? 36 cookies. I, and I'm just going to write this really shorthand. Instead of three cups of chips, I'm going to write three cups. I'm going to say that again. Instead of cups of chips, I'm just writing cups because it's easier. And we know what we're talking about here. It's not like you're like, it's not like we're completely lost when I put that. If you change this to like some random word, that doesn't work. We need to make sure it's pretty much the same. Um, and I'm giving you permission to do that this time. So if we divide 36 cookies by three cups, we get, what's 36 divided by three? Take a second to figure that out real quick on your calculators. We get 12 cookies per cup of chocolate chips. or 12 cookies per cup, or 12 cookies per cup of chips, whatever you want. As long as it's consistent, that's what I care about. Woohoo! Nice job, let's go, we're doing great. I'm gonna let you try this last one by yourself. I wanna see what you guys can get. It's pretty simple, it's the exact same process here, but instead we look at row four. So row four is right here for easy access, but row four is referring to the fourth row in this table. So when you see row one, two, three, and four in the future, know that it's talking about this. Now we're gonna hop to example two. Let's work on a new problem. We wanna see if a relationship is proportional again. Okay, so I've given us all three of these rows right here and we're gonna do the nice shortcut way, but let's see what we're dealing with first. Row one, two, and three are here and we see it's miles and hours. I'm gonna make this plural here, miles and hours. So in two hours, we can go 10 miles or it takes us we can go 10 miles in two hours. We can go 12 miles in four hours, and we can go 16 miles in eight hours. Now, we need to find the unit rate. So let's go ahead and do this. This looks pretty good though, right? This goes up by two, up by four, up by two, up by four. Take a second, and um, I want you to think to yourself, is this gonna be a unit rate? Will this, or is this going to be proportional? Pardon me. So I'm actually gonna add that right now. Hypothesize. I think that's how you spell that. There we go. Nope. I'll change it in a second. I'm going to add that right now. I just thought of that idea. And hmm, maybe I don't know how to spell anything, guys. Oh, well, we'll find out. It'll be spelled right on your document. I want you to hypothesize right here. So just think to yourself, is this going to be a unit rate? Now let's check it out. We're going to divide the top and the bottom here. Remember, calculate the unit rate by dividing the numerator by the denominator. Which one's the numerator class? I mean, you it's just you listening to this right now. So whoever is listening, the numerator is on top, right? Our numerator is up here, and our denominator is down here. I always think denominator starts with D, so it's down. That's how I've always remembered it. Now, row one, blank divided by blank, top divided by bottom, numerator divided by the denominator. Top is 10 miles. 10 miles divided by two hours. Oh, guys, this is a game changer here. That's going to make things so much easier for all of us. 10 miles divided by two hours gives us a unit rate of what? What's 10 divided by two class? five miles per hour. My game changer here is if you double click like this, it lets you erase the whole thing. So, so we get five miles per one hour and I'm actually gonna have you highlight this whole thing if you want. You don't have to, I think it looks better that way. Um, five miles per one hour or just five miles per hour. Okay, let's try it with 12 miles per four hours. So here we're dividing what first? 12 miles divided by what? I 
feel like Dora the Explorer sometimes with this, where she gives pauses in the videos. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And Dora, if you ever watch Dora, I watched it when I was a kid all the time, right? And she'd always pause and wait for you to answer. And that's how I feel right now because I'm just waiting. But 12 miles divided by four hours gives us a rate of, oh, crud. 12 miles divided, 12 divided by, what's 12 divided by four, guys? Is it five? I actually think it's three miles per hour. Oh, okay. Huh, so let's highlight our what we put in here. We put in 12 miles and we put in four hours. I guess, so is three miles per hour the same as five miles per one hour or just per hour, it's the same thing? Like, no, five and three are different numbers, so those are totally different. So if I hypothesize that this was going to be proportional, it's not. These unit rates are changing. Even though this looks good because they're going up by the same amount, the ratio is changing. What matters is not how much they're adding by, but how much like the ratio is. So if they divide the same unit rate. So we already know that this is not proportional. So if I wanted to, I could just be like, boom, not proportional. But I want for you to do row three by yourselves. Okay, you can pause and work on that right now too. Same thing with this one up here. If you didn't finish um, row four here, please pause and go ahead and work on those for a little bit. Now we have two more examples. And I just wanna do example three for you very quickly. Example three and four are differently because they kind of just, they're gonna guess this is proportional. They're assuming this is proportional. We are saying, hey, we know there's a proportional relationship between the cost for a, the cost and the pair of jeans. So this is no matter what gonna have the same unit rate. That being said, we don't know what the cost is for two pairs of jeans. We have to find that. Now, how are we gonna find that? Well, this is where we're gonna start to use multiplication. And it, on some of our cahoots and quizzes that we did last week, we had to use multiplication and we had to just kind of we kind of just do this. Some of us were confused about that and that's totally good. I'm so understanding if you're confused there because I didn't teach this yet. But what we need to do is kind of like what we did last time for unit rates, but backwards. So we see that one pair of jeans cost 12. This is our unit rate. Now all we need to do is figure out what we need to multiply this by to get to this. So how do we get from one pair of jeans to two? We don't add one. So if you're thinking we add one, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what do we multiply one by to get two? We multiply one by two to get two. So in order to go from 12 to here, we need to multiply by two. So that's gonna give us 24. And this one's even trickier. Now, if you have questions on this, we can talk about this a bit more. Um, it's kind of one of those trickier uh, parts of math that's just gonna take a lot of practice to be able to see if you're not getting it yet. So don't worry, we're gonna have a lot of practice uh, over the next week or so. Finally, pairs of jeans here. If it costs $36, how many pairs of jeans is it gonna be? Well, this is the same thing, but instead of multiplying one by a number, we're gonna multiply 12. So let me just do this actually, I forgot I have this. What do I need to do to get from 12 to 36? What do I need to do? I need to, I need to erase that. I need to times by three times by three. So that means that when I go from one to here, I need to times by three. And that's gonna give us a three right here. Does that make sense? I hope so. I think it makes sense to most of us. And if it doesn't, we can ask questions. Now, finally, we have this you choose right here, right? We have you choose. I want you to be creative. 
throw your own numbers in there. So I'm going to do a crazy one. If I had 100 pairs of genes, what would I multiply each of these numbers by? Well, 100 times 100, perfect. Times 100, awesome. Looks like a blast. So 100 pairs of genes, which is more than anyone needs. Let's let's be real. I don't think anyone has that many pairs of genes. Maybe like a Kardashian or something like that. Kanye West. Boom. Awesome. Okay. That said, oh, I'm I'm really hoping that if I, nope. Well. That is okay. I hope that that doesn't completely soil things for us, but we'll see. So that being said, oh, I don't know how to get that back. Let's see if I can find it up here, guys. Thank you for your patience. Hmm. Oh, no. That's okay. We're not going to worry. Okay. We're not going to worry. We're just going to finish it off here anyway. So... Example four is the one that you're going to do by yourself. And the summary down here is asking you to describe in your own words the following table and graph. So notice there's a graph here. We didn't talk about graphs and proportionality. This is a stretch, and I want you to try it. Now, I'm going to say the graph and the table are connected. They're, they're connected. I want you to take that and see if that helps you. Also, we very briefly talked about proportionality in unit rates earlier when we did a graphing assignment, when we looked at what's the same and what's different. Uh, so go ahead and try out this summary uh, in your own words at the bottom. I can't, guys, straight up, I cannot even scroll. For some reason, hiding that thing in the corner uh, derailed me. So we're going to go ahead and end the video here. I was planning on doing that anyway, but... And that's it. Uh, go ahead and work on example four, the summary. Make sure everything's complete, bolded, and um, you're, you've got some nice fun colors for where you've typed in things. Also, uh, make sure you do these right here, row one, row two, row three. This is easy to miss, like I did just now. So, uh, And I think that's it. There's going to be a file submission on Canvas for you guys. Um, I'm trying to use Canvas a bit more because I think it's a really great tool. So there you go. Have a great rest of your day, and you'll hear from the future me in just a few minutes. Keep up the good work, guys.